All right, hey there everybody, welcome to my channel and to this video. Today we're gonna to be installing this two inch brass drain as part of a shower renovation project that I am doing. We're gonna be installing the drain on top of a fiberglass shower pan. And we're not only gonna be installing it, but we're going to be testing it out, both the seal between the brass part and the fiberglass shower pan, as well as connecting it to a PVC pipe and doing some simple water testing. Now I'm not a plumber at all, so whatever you see here, obviously take that with a grain of salt, but this is how I installed mine as part of my shower renovation project. Now, what I'm doing here is taking some plumber's putty and getting that nice and warm and pliable and malleable. Now, a lot of people prefer silicone and your instructions for your, for your brass drain might actually call for silicone. And I'll put a link in the description below for this particular brass drain and I am using plumber's putty. So we're gonna give you a look at how you can actually, what that looks like in the installation process and how well it can hold up to water. So after it's nice and pliable, we're gonna be kind of forming it into a long bead, a long snake-like formation there, just like that. And we'll wrap it around the underside, the under lip of the brass drain. Now that's gonna be your basically your your barrier between the brass and your fiberglass shower pan. So be liberal in your application here. Use as much as you want or can and try to get it nice and uniform as much as you can. You want that drain, that brass drain, as you'll see in just a minute, you want it to depress equally, meaning you don't want one side to get lower first than the other side. So kind of something like that should do you well. And we're going to be, you know, scraping a lot of this stuff off as we depress it down as it pushes all that putty out, as you'll see here in just a second. So we'll make sure that's nice and even. Set it just like that. There we go, you'll have some residue on your fingers. You can wipe that off. And I try not to let this stuff touch anywhere else on the fiberglass pan. I want any oily residue that it might leave behind to be isolated to just the drain part. Next up, we'll go underneath here and we're gonna take, it comes with a little rubber, little rubber gasket, really thin one. And then the paper one that is not garbage, so don't throw that away, that's really important. That's gonna prevent it, uh, the rubber gasket from bunching up as you tighten the final little piece that you'll, the, the little nut here. So in that order, you need to put those, put that on in that order, and the instructions should should state that, and you'll twist that by hand. Make sure things are relatively straight. You don't want the rubber gasket shooting off to one side too much, although as you tighten, it might do that inevitably. And in our leak test, we'll see if that's okay or not. So stay with me here, we're gonna put this thing under some water. But first, let's get that tightened down, and obviously, as you do so, check that brass to the top part of the drain out. I'm actually turning it and you can see it start to move down. And as you continue to do that, you shouldn't, it should be, you should feel some tension or some resistance, but it should still turn by hand for a lot of the way. And there we go. It should kind of do that for the most, for the most part, that putty is really thick stuff. Um, and then you'll need a pipe wrench or something to get it the rest of the way. So we'll just continue to, to do that. And you can see here, once it's pretty much depressed, you can get rid of the excess stuff and see if that gold lip is, is all the way down firm against the fiberglass shower pan. And you can reuse the stuff that came out. So we actually didn't use that. We started with a lot, but didn't actually end up using that much. And then we'll wipe the rest off with your finger. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. The strainer that you put on will cover will cover that. But we want to just even that out a little bit. And if there's still a big gap, you're going to want to go back under and tighten that up some more. Don't over tighten it. And I can't tell you an exact spec on how much torque you should tighten that to, but all right, so next we'll actually test that out. Now, plumber's putty, you can test it pretty much immediately, whereas if silicone, it would require 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever, whatever it takes there to fully cure. And we're gonna let some water sit. Now we're gonna let it drip through the drain, and I'm gonna dab that up with a towel, but I want it to pool intentionally right here. So that water is covering the area that it, basically you see any plumber's putty. We're gonna let it sit 
for several hours. But again, I'm gonna dry everything off here to make sure that my starting point is dry. And I have a dry piece of Tupperware underneath. And we'll just let it sit to see if any of that water falls through that gap. Now it would be coming through the underside, not through that, but it would ideally be still falling into that. And several hours later we are dry. So it's not a professional test by any means, but it gives me some comfort and some peace of mind knowing that there aren't any gaping holes or clear obvious entry points there. All right, so next we'll put the shower pan down. And this is just a dry fit. I'm not permanently installing this. I want to test it out first. Now y'all are going to think I'm crazy here in just a minute. So watch what I'm going to do. Um, the instructions state to put the gasket, the really thick gasket, bevel side up. A lot of people think it should go down. Put that bevel side up. The flat square piece on the bottom needs to rest firmly against the brass bottom of the drain. So we'll push that all the way down. And you can get a very dull screwdriver or maybe the the brass tool, that uh, the drain tool that came with it and kind of put to help you push that down. Make sure you put a, a paper towel or some type of rag over it because you don't want your tool here that you're going to see to fall down the, the drain. And it will. It's a small tool. So next we'll take the castle nut that it came with it, what came with the, the drain, and we will make sure the thread it's on the threads. If you feel any initial resistance, it's not threaded correctly. So uh, it should be nice and smooth and turn freely up until it hits that rubber gasket. And then you'll start to feel some tension as it depresses that rubber gasket downward. And you can use the tool to help you. And it has a little slot where you can take a flathead screwdriver. Make sure you put your put some force downward and turn. Just like that. It's pretty simple. Until it's nice and tight. You could also take a pipe wrench to finish it up. Give it another quarter turn. And again, I don't have any exact specs. You just have to kind of feel it. Is it tight or not? And then we'll put the strainer on there. Now, you could just walk away at this point, but I'm not super happy. I want to test it out first, right? I want to test it out first. So that was kind of, would be kind of the final, the final product, right? The strainer covers up any of that plumber's putty. So with the drain now fully installed, I'm going to just take about a half a gallon of water and I'm going to lightly pour it. And here, I know the outer seal is gonna is good because I tested that earlier. But now I'm checking for that rubber gasket and the castle nut. I'm just pouring water just to try to simulate a shower and what drainage might look like. And in a minute, I'm going to show you the underside of this. And I'll show you the system that I kind of devised to test for any leaks. Now with the shower pan down, I actually don't have bottom access to it. Uh, this is on the showers on a second floor and I'd have to open up the first floor ceiling in order to look at this So let me show you kind of what I did So I did a half gallon and I felt you know relatively good about that And now I just needed more water. I needed to up the test a little bit. So I hooked up my hose to my sink and let it run for a good 10 minutes kind of like that making sure that water again trying to simulate a shower right making sure that water gets around all the sealed areas so after about 10 minutes of continuous water running here we're going to go ahead and shut the water off and i'm going to reverse the installation of the castle nut and the rubber gasket very gently removing that I don't want to damage that rubber gasket I used a screwdriver and also when I lifted up my shower pan the rubber gasket just kind of popped right off because I didn't secure that down and let's take a look at underneath here where I have my p-trap now look at my system that I had devised you see a bunch of polyurethane stapled so any water 
that would have come out of that pipe, that drain, excuse me, any leaking or any, you know, seal broken would have um, collected water at the bottom of, by the way, I'm checking for all seals here, but it bottom, it would have collected at the bottom of that hole. Here's the underside. I'm also feeling here for any moisture. I feel nothing. Everything looks dry, but water would have accumulated down there. I had put a plastic washer, a uh, um, little, a wall anchor through there. So any water would have pooled and dripped out through that hole. This is showers on a second, the second floor. So I went down onto the first floor and basically felt the other side of that hole there uh, to see if there was any leakage. Everything feel is feeling really dry. Let's check the first floor ceiling. Again, that water would have come out right there. Everything is dry. It would have dripped into the bucket. The bucket is dry. So I know, know my seal is good. And we'll stop the video right there. That is how I installed my two inch brass drain and water tested it. Thanks for being with me. For more do-it-yourself home projects, be sure to subscribe.